That's your report for tonight, Homer, right? <laughs> All righty. Uh, so I'll be short and sweet um, tonight. Uh, this is kind of getting us caught up on um, the first two months of FY20, uh, October and November. Uh, last month we did an end of the fiscal year update and so this gets us back uh, to our kind of present time frame. Uh, so far in FY20 we've collected about 46.5 uh, million in revenue and we spent about 47.4 in expenses giving us an ending fund balance about 49.8 still over our two month reserve balance. Uh, we received about 16% of our budgeted revenue, and uh, we're about 19% uh, of our budgeted expenditures for the first two months of the fiscal year. Uh, local revenue comparison, um, you can see, um, and we actually got a $10 million wire this week, and so when I report December, you're going to see the spike up as we get our Avalorum, and so we'll see the normal uh, seasonality trends where we get majority of our Avalorum in uh, December and January. Uh, so we'll see it spike up and it'll probably be very similar to the pink line, which was la which was last year. So we'll see a, a majority of it in, um, in December, the rest of it in January, and then we'll fall back down and be collecting sales tax for the remaining, uh, remainder of the fiscal year. Uh, that will also be reflected on general fund balance. As the Avalorum comes up, we'll see our general fund balance spike up. Um, to you know, pretty close to where it's been in, in previous years as well. Uh, the monthly financial update: um, we're still running about you know 23 to 24 uh, million dollars per month in operating cost. When you include the transfers out for debt service and um, other aspects, um, when you look at Avalorum, you can see we've already collected about 12 million dollars of our 52. I mean, of our $54.2 million budget, which is about 22% uh, of our budget at Valorum revenue. Uh, <clears throat> sales tax, looking at um, October to November, we're at $7.1 million um, compared to last year at $6.7 million. I do want to, uh, to kind of put a caveat here that uh, the easiest way for me to present year-over-year uh, changes in the sales taxes to do it on a cash basis and so that basically what that means is that as the revenue is received by the board then we, we book it uh, that month and then when I as we're kind of closing out the fiscal year we we bring it back to an accrual basis meaning that it's booked based on when it's earned and so you can see looking at the cash basis comparison here the month of October didn't factor in the uh, the seven percent that we have to share with Gulf Shores and so as we look at year-over-year -year results, just know that it's going to go down year-over-year -year because we're having to share, you know, approximately 7% of our sales tax revenue with Gulf Shore City Board of Education. So I uh, don't want anybody to be surprised or get too excited uh, looking at year-over-year. -year, so it, it will go down there. Um, that's all that I had. Any, uh, any questions or concerns? Could have been a lot worse Absolutely. on, on the share. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a mix. I mean, we're going to lose, you know, we lost some sales tax revenue because we're having to share, but we gained, you know, a $6 million increase in our state funds because of our decline in our local match requirement. So, John, you feel good? You, you good? I'm good. I'm excellent. Oh, I'm Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> any, any questions for John? Okay. That's all of our. Uh, work session items, Ms. Dawson. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can read the agenda any and then, then read it again in the work board meeting. Or? Any need just to go over the agenda items or read it as we go? All right. Uh, any, uh, any problem with going right into the meeting? In that case, Call to order the November 10th meeting of Baldwin County Board of Education. Oh, I'm sorry, December. Well, that's because November is my birthday. I wanted to have another one. But then you get here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson, do you mind opening us in prayer?
If you would please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm assuming we have any recognition of visitors. <coughs> Terry's not here. No, we don't. No, ma'am. No letters of commendation? Uh, no, those have been moved uh, by the request of those being All right. commendated till January. Okay, thank you. Um, looking at the minutes on November, for the November 21st organizational meeting and regular meeting is there a motion to approve the minutes um, i move we approve the minutes both meetings Second. i have a motion by mr christenberry second by mr johnson for approval of the minutes all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed and we have no delegation signed up to speak this evening so we will run on to uh, amendments to the agenda mr superintendent Yes, ma'am. Amendments to the super to the agenda. Amend number six, leave of absence of personnel. Number seven, retirement and resignations of personnel. Number nine, transfer intent to transfer of personnel. Number ten, employment of personnel. Number eleven, extra work for extended periods. Add agenda item twelve, public works. Add agenda item thirteen, South Alabama Regional Planning Commission agreements. Motion to approve the amendments. Second. I have a motion to approve by Ms. Collie, a second by Ms. Lynch. Any discussion on those amendments? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? And the agenda is amended as indicated. All right, action items. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, items of business. Agenda item one, bid proposals. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the low bidder meeting specifications and bid extensions for goods and services for the system as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Second. We have a motion uh, by Ms. Colley, a second by Mr. Christenberry. Any discussion? Okay. That's all right. All right. Thomas Roofing, is this just for construction or just maintenance? No, sir, this is just maintenance. As we get uh, work orders for roof leaks to come in at various locations, they have an hourly rate. And the, the, the maximum amount is $50,000 on that. So it's just smaller projects. We just use those on a daily basis. Any other questions? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item two, proposed 2020-2021 school calendar options. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the dissemination of the three Proposed school calendar options to local schools and organizations for input as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Motion by Second. Lynch. Second by Mr. Crisenberry. Any discussion? I just uh, like that it's coming out earlier this year than it usually yes. does. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. It would have probably been out. A lot of people appreciate that. We would have probably disseminated it. I talked to Louise at Thanksgiving, but it had been a very short period of time between now, then, and now. So we're going to come back to you in January. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item three, seal of biliteracy. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the recognition of attaining biliteracy on the high school transcript and by use of a seal on the high school diploma as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion by Mr. Christenberry, second by Ms. Lynch. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. George Renee, I see this as a as a, a an addition to a, a transcript and a diploma. Good thing, okay. a good seal. Great one to have on you. Mm -hmm. Agenda item four: approval of contract Halton Mifflin Harcourt. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the contract with Halton Mifflin Hawk, Har Harcourt as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Second. Motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Ms. Colley. Any questions or discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Agenda item five, approval of contracts, after school child care funds. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the contracts to be paid from after school child care funds as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. Second. Motion by Mr. Johnson, the second by Mr. Christenberry. Any questions or discussion? No, it's paid out of the funds collected in the after school program that the parents pay. All of it? Yes. Yeah. They're completely self sufficient as of this moment. Yes. I, that was the, I think, Mr. with uh, Sarpsy. Uh, yeah, that's the that's Sarpsy, Sarpsy agreement. That's contract. Yeah. Yes. That's the staffing yeah, agency for, staffing. for both the after-school program that, that's funded through the, the weekly tuition and the, the remaining but schools that are on 21st century. And that's different than this that's one right that's here, right? Okay. This, yes. okay. this is all funded with the, uh, the parent-paid weekly mm -hmm. tuitions at those schools. Okay. Any other discussion or questions all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed and the motion carries agenda item six leave of absence of personnel superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the leave of absence of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover so moved i have a motion for miss collie a second for mr johnson any questions discussion all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item seven, retirement and resignations of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the retirement and resignations of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. A motion for Ms. Colley, a second from Ms. Lynch. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Uh, next week, I think we have three scheduled uh, retirement mm -hmm. uh, parties. <laughs> yes, so we do. check with uh, Hope. She usually knows where these things are happening. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, agenda item eight suspension of personnel unpaid. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the unpaid suspension of personnel as provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Second. Uh, uh, Bill. Motion from Ms. Colley, a second from Mr. Johnson. All those in favor, I'm sorry, any discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item nine, transfer intent to transfer personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the transfer intent to transfer of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. Second. Motion by Ms. Lynch, a second by Ms. Colley. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Agenda item 10, employment of personnel. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the employment of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Mr. Christenberry, a second by Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 11, extra work for extended periods. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the extra work of personnel as amended and provided to board members under separate cover. So moved. Motion by Ms. Colley. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any questions or discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Agenda item 12, public works. The superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to approve the low bidders for public works projects as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So move. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Christenberry, second by Ms. Lynch. Any questions or discussion? Had it on one of the 
We actually had a pre-bid last week, and we have, uh, it was either four or five contractors that were there. I wasn't at the bid opening today, or I think it was today, the bid opening, but I assume that's on what did turn in a price. But we did have several that participated for the pre-bid conference. No, sir. No. no, sir. They've been around forever. Yeah. Any further discussion or questions? Not. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. I guess they got too much work going on. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Jen item 13, South Alabama Regional Planning Commission Agreement. Superintendent recommends adoption of a motion to authorize the superintendent and to enter into the agreements with the South Alabama Regional Planning Commission, SARPC, as stipulated in the agenda exhibit. So moved. Motion from Ms. Colley, a second from Ms. Lynch. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. So I will have Ms. Dawson and I would call on staff members for a brief report unless there's any other discussions on the agenda items. I'm not, anyone else have any other discussions? No? no. Frank, anything to report to the board? I'll quickly go down the list and just updates on where we are on construction projects based on meetings with architects and our field reports. The Elberta High School paving was the last we had there. There'll be a, they should start paving next week if this rain doesn't set in and cause problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, Spanish Fort High School classroom addition looks like the completion will be mid January, early February. Fairhope High K6, the classroom additions is set for February and the gym in May. Uh, Foley K6 looks like February. Bell Forest is still on track for May. Orange Beach High, the end of May. Daphne Middle School, they'll be starting that addition during the holidays. Uh, Fairhope Ninth Grade Academy will look to bid uh, late January. Daphne High School, Ninth Grade Academy bid uh, March, April. Uh, J. Larry Newton bid in February in Stonebridge. The survey's done and they're working on the geotech to keep that rolling. The design is basically done. We've got just to adapt to that site. And a uh, Spanish Ford Elementary survey work's been done. It's just a matter of which location we go with. Any, any questions on construction? <clears throat> Frank, would you what did you say about the Spanish Fort High School edition and gym? Yeah. What was that date? The Spanish Fort High School ad classroom edition looks like it's going to be mid January, early February. We may gain a week or two, but they were they were looking to have a a final on the 18th, <laughs> but that did not happen. I just I, I know you had, you had mentioned that, but the school uh, told me it would be the 18th last week. So let's well, just Frank <laughs> is telling you that it'll be <laughs> mid January, early February. <laughs> That sounds probably more like it. Uh, uh, yes, and, and we're hoping to get some news on the gym floor. Yes, we were hoping to have that. Uh, Marty and I were discussing that. We are hoping to have that report. They said it was in three weeks, and this will be the third week. And we asked McKee and Associates last night, and they were looking to get that this week also. Hope springs eternal, huh? Oh, yeah. I guess. All right. We, we live it's on the hope. the season but, of miracles. But, uh, <laughs> The, they had a third party, and that's what this company does, is they just inspect gym floors, and they're supposed to be the experts, and they will give us our options, whether it be to replace it, whether it be where it just needs to be sanded. What they do is test the wood for the certain their, their industry standards that have certain tolerances. I mean, it, it does have a cupping to it, but it may be within those tolerances, and then you just sand down and refinish it, and that's what their guidance is going to tell us what to do so we don't have to go back and forth with a contractor. <coughs> No, <laughs> I, I think what happened is they send a $2,500 check, McKee did, and then they tell you when they'll come, the guy flies in and does a report. And then three weeks later, you get it. And, and the good thing about all the reports <coughs> there is it's paid for or being paid for. Yes, sir. No not bonding, on our dime. No taxes. We'll keep, sure. we'll keep stating that yes, as long as we can state it. So yeah. thank you, Frank, for that, John. That's um, Real quick, um, I'm working on the final details regarding our phase four pay go financial agreement with uh, with regions. Uh, we're going to be probably separating the uh, the career tech building from this initial agreement. Um, looking at a $50 million four year construction drawdown loan, and I hope to have everything ready for board approval by January or February by the latest there. So things are moving um, really well in that regards. Um, one more thing, uh, um, 
missile bond rates are back down to record lows. I'm actually looking at refinancing one of our original uh, 2005 bonds for a second time. Uh, it's projected to save us about $800,000 in interest over the same original time period, um, which it goes from you know today till 2029. And so I'll probably have some more details on that in January as well. Good. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. Rates stuff. are pretty volatile, so yeah, I'll have a I'll have an update in, in January. So. And the only thing I'll add with Frank and John is we had a fantastic uh, meeting yesterday looking at some uh, architect renderings of a possible future uh, career tech uh, uh, high school, standalone high school. And uh, very exciting. We, we did settle in on a design, and uh, we're excited about that. Uh, we, I don't know when we might roll that out. We're, you know, uh, but we, we're just kind of keeping it close to the vest right now, and then we'll naturally let you see what, what we're looking at. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But where we are now, we've got something that people like Lee Lawson and others can actually put on an easel and show industry. Uh, what something looks like possibly for the future of Baldwin County career tech workforce. So, very excited about that. I, 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 in my opinion, but I think we need to be careful that it stands alone. It looks like that. Uh, Montgomery County went in and bought a shopping center, a whole shopping center, made a career tech out of it. They are one of the finest. It's about to go under. Um, you know, we can't find workers now that kids want to work. You know, and can't. Fill it up with, with people, kids that want to go. You have a problem. The thing Montgomery County is having is kids don't want to be there all day. They want to go back to their school for a different reason. Girlfriends, what have you, boyfriends, there's girls in there too. But just, you know, just me. Just me. I appreciate those comments, Mr. Mr. Mark. I, I think that it, it, me as a superintendent, I can't necessarily think about the future of, of a developing a, a school for workforce development, bringing industry in. Of course, the industry would have to come in and partner with us, and we would have to design a school for what we think would be uh, a reasonable amount of growth. But you know, it's a it's an it's one of those schools to where kind of like our virtual school, you go there, and then you at the end of the day you can go back and participate in extracurricular activities, band, mm -hmm. uh, clubs. So it, it, uh, the problem we have now with our two trade schools is, is scheduling and, uh, and actually getting industry to get excited about how we're producing the future of workforce development. No, nobody seems to latch on to us. But I do, I do understand you. Kids sometimes have their own agenda and how they want to approach the day. But, uh, It's uh, aerospace. Uh, Welding, industrial maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many, how many kids do we have that's in the welding part of the you know? I don't know how many have in the welding part, but we have, it, it's it's maxed out as far as the number of students that are school. attending. It's very well uh, attended. Our concern is right now talking to some folks that is, is a two-year college is going to do something that might move some of that over across the bay and so we're to a bishop and so we have some concerns and so uh we're we're, we're talking uh about how we need to stay whole and solid and supported uh i know our politicians know that but we we haven't gotten really deep in the weeds yet so we're going to well yeah you know they partner with us on the uh, cdl yeah i, I, yeah. I knew that. Yeah. And workforce up in that area, yeah. rural area, yeah. 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 That's something I think that Renee, hopefully we'll have conversations to reach out, you know, uh, in the next year to see where we can go with some of this stuff. But, but some good thoughts. I appreciate that. I just want to give you an update on that. Uh, Tiffany, Jennifer. <laughs> um, what's happening in HR is that I'm retiring. And, um, <laughs> thank you for the treat very much. Um, I am, uh, I'm passing the torch to Tiffany. So um, really the, the three main things that we have going on, obviously we're going through this transitionary period and kind of working every day on 
um, the knowledge dump um, and going through the day-to-day -day stuff um, that's happening every day. It's been very exciting, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that I wanted to share um, that we're working on is just trying to get our arms around with John um, on the rezoning effort. So just to try to, um, I would like to leave with some skeleton of a plan of what that is going to look like so that Tiffany and John can work together to kind of execute the plan when we get to the point where we, you know, need to do that. Um, and then we have, I don't know if you recall, but um, quite some time ago, you all voted to invest in a web-based HR management tool. Um, and so we are now um, successfully processing all of our HR and personnel actions and information in that system. Um, and that system communicates with our payroll system. So at the end of the day, um, we are eliminating the dual entry that really triple entry that's been occurring between the HR office and the payroll office um, for years and years and years while we have been using a Microsoft Access database mm -hmm. to enter and process all of that personnel data. So um, that is for the most part complete. Um, there are still some integration things that we're working on um, that Tiffany and I have been talking about um, that need to be finalized, but um, we are processing information. And so at some point in the very near future, in the next few months, the agenda items that you get may look a little bit in a different format because they're going to be generated from that system. So when that happens, um, Tiffany will give you all a heads up, you know, as far as that it's going to look different when you get it on the board agenda. But it's been um, very easy and very seamless. Our bookkeepers and principals are using it. Um, to look up information um, and run reports. I think John used it the other day to run some reports. Um, and it's, I think it's going to be a tremendous tool um, and definitely has moved us into the 21st century in terms of how we're able to process information. So thank you for supporting that. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Yeah, any questions on that? To, you know, sometimes y'all think during your day you have a lot of heavy issues to deal with. <laughs> you know, so I'm dealing, I'm dealing, you know, I deal with, people all day long and so when my outgoing HR director says can, can I move a meeting because I have a hair appointment uh, you know, that's, very, that's very important I, I, I don't know if she just says what are you gonna do fire me or what? So, uh, it's very so y'all think you got heavy issues every day oh. she says you know that's real important it's, it's so I didn't argue it is important it is, it is important so I did important. I just had Sorry. to get that out. Didn't Sorry, where were where you're drawing Jennifer? attention to the fact yeah, that I need a hair say, appointment? I'm, I'm with Jennifer so that's on right. that one. I, yeah. I'm sure Jennifer <laughs> will, will probably pay back uh, somehow. So I'll anyway. get you back <laughs> for sure uh, when you least expect it. Joyce Renee. Um, so we were allowed time at the last board meeting, so I feel that you're probably updated with curriculum at this time. But uh, I, any questions, uh, of course, are welcome. But I would like to say tonight is Dr. Woodburn's last board meeting as well and I just thank you for allowing us to have time together it has been um, very beneficial to me we have worked together and I have learned so many things but most of all we've become good friends and she's going to be greatly missed I still hadn't finished dealing with Joyce until she exits I'll probably be giving her a hard time until she exits so uh, <laughs> Uh, what kind of appointments no. does Joyce have? Do we know? <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, did you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce. <laughs>
Uh, with this purchase came some state mandates, and one of those mandates is that we be off our existing uh, student information system, iNow, by next academic year. So we're in the process of making that happen. But not only is it to iNow, we're also comes with it as Schoology as their uh, learning management system. So we're also going to be implementing that. Uh, this implementation will touch every aspect of education in Baldwin County, it, all the way from health records to uh, special services to professional development to retention of grades, uh, students, uh, attendance, RTI. I can continue on the list, but it's going to be a large implementation. Every teacher will be affected. Every staff member that deals with students will be affected. Uh, so it, uh, it's something that we're trying to keep up. Fortunately for us, we were one of six school districts selected for the pilot. Uh, we, have, we, are, we are blessed to have some talented employees. Uh, they have been up in Montgomery for the last two months off and on uh, identifying problems. They've not rolled this out in this kind of magnitude at any state. This is going to be the largest implementation done by PowerSchool ever. Uh, so with that, any implementation come glitches and stuff. And so at least we're getting to see them in advance. Uh, they also have announced with this uh, hard deadlines prevent, uh, provided is that we have already moved to uh, Power School Professional Learning, which is their professional development portal. Uh, so we've been live on that for about uh, one month. Uh, all scheduling and I now uh, for next academic year must be completed by June 1st. Uh, all data corrections in the state's portal that we have to go ahead and validate has to be completed by June 5th. So our end of the school year is going to be really tight and it's going to take a lot of uh, folks engaged in that process. It's also going to require us to move in some of our uh, internal processes such as uh, kindergarten registration is going to have to go earlier, returning students registration is going to have to go earlier. We have to revamp all our consistent pro uh, customized reports uh, that uh, is needed for uh, academics and attendance uh, uh, by this implementation. Uh, so. Fortunately, because we're the pilot, we're in the process right now of moving all our data. We have an instant up, sites working, operational, and so we're moving our data today out of iNow and getting it into PowerSchool. As I mentioned, uh, this is an extremely tight implementation. It's really the aggression is, I, I'm really concerned about it, uh, because the other LEAs hadn't even seen it yet. Uh, so uh, not only are we identifying problems for Baldwin County, but we're identifying problems for the state and all the LEAs. So uh, we've also concerned is how this is going to impact the students. Talking with John and uh, our academic partners here, we're going to provide one-day training with all the teachers on grade books and all the things prior to the school start. So we have 21 uh, power school instructors coming to teach that class. Uh, one of the things we didn't do with I now is they never they never received formal training on a grade book, and we were still paying for that uh, ten years later. So we're trying to make sure that we get the training adequate uh, that the teachers need, and that uh, they're going to be prepared when school starts. Anything else, home? No, there's nothing else going on in my area. <laughs> I do want the board to know that all of our schools are aware of this. All principals have been informed of this. All those that the officers have been informed. Uh, so the principals informed their school, so everyone has been made aware. And uh, and Homer and his, his staff, and we, we probably have, I know we have the best uh, IT uh, division in the state because the state always talks to our people down here and always requests our people to go up there. So another area of our, of our uh, system we can be extremely proud of. So thank you, Homer, for that. Anthony? Life is good in prevention and support services. Briefly, I do not have a hair appointment, so that won't take long. Um. <laughs> I, I'd wanna, I just want to start off by saying uh, thank you uh, to the superintendent for participating in CPR first aid training. And the reason why I start with that is that it, it starts at the top. And all of the efforts that we do to keep our students safe, our staff safe, and the same measures that we have an expectation for employees to do, we need to fulfill those duties here in the central office. So we went through a training in this actual room on yesterday, trained, the nurses trained uh, 15 in this site, multiple um, employees in Loxley on two separate occasions on CPR first, uh, 
aid as well as recertification on MERT, which is um, the medical emergency response emergency. training. So um, those things tie into a bigger picture, local emergency planning committee in light of what's happened in Pensacola. Um, the EMA director has called together a mass casualty triage discussion conversation. So we have a seat at the table to participate in those things so that if something happens, um, we're prepared and we're not caught unprepared in, in dealing with it. I want to invite you to professional development because we won't have a chance to say so prior to the end, January the 6th from 9 until 11. That is a countywide SRO meeting. So it gives you an opportunity to hear from um, the district attorney, the sheriff, and all those other players as we discuss how we keep our... Where, Anthony? Uh, where? It will be at the C.F. C. Taylor Alternative School. And aside from that, Again, life is good and prevention Thank is important. You, I, I, Thank you. I always struggle with passing tests all through my academic life, but I did pass CPR. <laughs> uh, I feel good about that. Uh, you know, I walked out of here with a smiley face, so that was good. Uh, and it is the tragedies that continue to happen. It is, if there's any comfort I have when I go home and get up in the morning is that you as a board have, uh, through John's efforts, my efforts, and everybody's efforts, have secured our schools with, with uh, single point entries, mm -hmm. electronic entries, with SRO men and women, Aaliyah trained in every one of our facilities. Uh, several years ago, I was uneasy when all these things were happening all over the country and even close to home in Parkland. But it uh, doesn't mean it couldn't happen tomorrow. But at least we are making an effort to keep our, our employees and our, our students safe. And I appreciate that board for your efforts and, and the investment we've made. So thank you for that. Will, will you please email that information well, out? Thank you. Yes, Marty? Uh, just real quick. Uh, we've actually found this out today. Um, Baldwin County High School was uh, kind of without a uh, new training partner. Uh, because their long-term um, personal company they were using, Bay Manette, uh, decided that it was financially it just wasn't. What training partner? Tr their, per their trainers their for trainers. Oh, athletic athletic trainers. athletics and stuff. <laughs> athletic so, trainers um, resonates. Okay. We've been, we've been working a, a, for a while. I, I probably brought the John a, a while back. Tom's looked at it to uh, make a permanent contract with Encore. Uh, to take on all our schools, and we found out today Encore has picked up Bay Manette. So That's they good. will now be doing all of our high schools. Um, each high school have two trainers, uh, so the boys and girls get equal equal time. And uh, we should have those contracts ready, hopefully in the next week. Uh, we got to add all them back to them, let, of course, all the legal stuff, make sure everything's where it needs to be. and. Uh, at first, they weren't able to do it. They were asking for more money, and I talked to you about it. They've agreed now to stay with what we were doing. So. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Marty. Uh, Hope? Okay, wearing my professional development hat. Tomorrow we have our principals and assistant principals end of the year meeting. Santa will be there for the morning meeting. Please come, board. It starts yes. at 9 at the Culinary. Get culinary Arts meeting. for breakfast. Santa will be giving all of our principals uh, Santa's Secret Leadership Skills book. That's a really cute little book that just talks about leadership from the North Pole. Uh, in January, we're doing something a little different with our um, principals meetings. We started this. We, we, at this point, know our principals know how to look at data. So now we're trying to move into what do you do with it. Mm -hmm. So in January, uh, elementary will be meeting at Foley Elementary School and Middle High School. Secondary will be meeting at Robertsdale High School to... Uh, watch a mock data meeting and RTI meeting at both settings. And then uh, I think secondary is going to be looking at some of the things with scheduling. But so we're going in a different direction there. Uh, also on Thursday, I will be traveling to Montgomery by the request of our class president and the state superintendent to speak to the state board on uh, math standards before they vote, hopefully in March. And then starting off the 2020 school year, assisting the principals that are undergoing the redistricting with staffing. Thank you, Hope. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank basically you. my report is a successful uh, virtual school ribbon cutting and open house last night. 
a lot of great comments. Uh, thank you, board, for investing in that facility. Uh, thank you for, uh, you know, we have some, some upcoming things. Hopefully, uh, Frank, uh, we're, we're pushing our, our architects and our contractors. Uh, we've learned a lot <laughs> over this last pay as you go, and, and hopefully you all are allowing us to get ahead of the curve with contracts with architects and everything else that we need to do so that we can stay on schedule because it, 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 it's not getting any, any less last night at the virtual school. I, I said hello to a parent. A young man was there. He had a, he had a Christ the King uh, uh, shirt on, and I just thought maybe he was a brother or, or, or something of one of her older children. She said, no, he's just here because we're interested. And so, uh, you know, and before we had the ribbon cutting, I spoke to a parent who walked through there who was now bringing another one of her children there. So, and then I spoke to a parent at one of our high schools, just introduced myself, and, and uh, she said, well, we're coming from one of the private schools because, uh, you know, we just feel like that Baldwin County schools are going to offer what we want. So uh, I'll, I, what you're doing is working. It's sending a message, and I appreciate that, and, and all of us appreciate that. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. We appreciate your leadership as well. Um, Joyce and Jennifer, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, I remember the day Jennifer walked into my office. I thought she was a teenager. Uh, but we won't go there. <laughs> so um, with that, I'd like to, to say you Merry Christmas to everybody. When you walked, when George walked in. I, well, I, yeah, <laughs> Joyce and I were teenagers together. I can't win for losing in this seat. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, Joyce and I go way back. <laughs> and I didn't interrupt your Merry Christmas. That's all right. No, that's all right. I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone in case I don't see anyone while you're finishing your next couple of weeks working. And um, tell you what a pleasure it is to to work with, you know, a staff of this quality with leadership that we have that uh, has people stand up and you know, look at our school system and walk away from private schools because they know what we have to offer. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. I know Tiffany's here because I think you want to do a Merry Christmas thing. Yes, we're going to do a... It's wonderful that we can, as Merry a superintendent, Christmas thing. Uh, regardless of what's going on up in the northern states, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Yep. You know, uh, and uh, it's near and dear. And Scotty, thank you for what you do for us. And, and Terry, we appreciate that. Uh, you know... Cliff coming here and and our SROs Glenn thank you for showing up and we should appreciate Louise we also we don't ever forget you either so <laughs> we appreciate you all right well, Mr. Dawson so, that's all I have I hear a motion to adjourn, motion to adjourn. and I'll turn uh, the Christmas stuff over to Miss Dawson motion carries <laughs> we're gonna do a yeah real quick don't don't get off Tony don't go anywhere <laughs> We're going to make a video. I have a Santa hat for whoop, you. Woohoo! 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 Woo. Okay. This is the, they're beginning the audit this week. Okay. Public examiners, and they All just right. need to sign this engagement letter. Um, okay, board chair, right there. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh huh. Start off.
blessed to all of you. You know, have a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year and then say some smoothies and ho, 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 whatever. And then all of us would say at the same time, Merry Christmas. That is you know, so much better than what we did last year when we were all trying to say the same thing at the same time. Same time. Uh, that didn't work well. Right? No, it yeah. didn't work well. So okay. can we try that? Yeah. And then we can, just to get it out to the employees and out to everybody from the board. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll send say it out. Merry Christmas. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. You want a... Yeah, so Tiffany. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.